going on everyone and today I have a quick tutorial that I haven't seen much on YouTube it's about how to make a an update checker or an automatic update or for your game um, this is I saw another tutorial for this but I mean some of you may not have seen that and some people got errors some people didn't really see um, how to do it really so I'm going to show you how uh, every step along the way so um, let me just start uh, to open game maker and create a new file so you guys can see beginning to end help not even doing anything to this file um, alright so if we go ahead and click new I'm just gonna name this tutorial updater and click enter and there we go. Alright, so now we need to create a file on your desktop for the updater. So if you open Notepad, um, what you want to do is we're going to type in brackets version, oops, version, and then enter low and do number, no spaces, equals, and this can be, you know, right now we could set it for zero since you know the version zero the version number might be zero so you just click save save as and you want to do um, I'm just gonna do tutorial dot ini normally you should do something like config or update dot ini something like that and just save it to the desktop so there we go we have this so now what you want to do is you want to go to x oh, actually just go to google you're using Google Chrome because it's going to try to make a website. So it's X10 hosting, and this X10 hosting you want to create an account at. And once you create an account and go to your control panel, it's going to come up with this. And if you just go to the public HTML and then your website name folder, it'll come up with this. So if you click upload at the top, I just check all these, it really doesn't matter. Choose your file which in this case is tutorial.ini open that it's gonna say it uploaded you just click back and there we go we have it uploaded right here so now what we want to do is we want to get this link not this link here you want to paste that into your browser to go to your website here and you just click on oops what happened there there it is you want to go to tutorial.ini and then here's it says version number and everything you, this link you want to copy that and exit that and there we go so now if you go back into your um, tutorial project I'm just going to create a simple sprite and call this update this is just to show an example that uh, it actually does work and not just sits there the entire time in the room so you don't have to make this uh, you could literally just have an object showing, you know, whatever you want in your room. So we're just gonna make a crazy looking like smiley face dude here. Dot there. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. So if we create a room, and I'm just gonna call this test, and we can make it really small. I'm gonna do 360 by one. Hmm, let's say. 140. Now let's do like 240. There we go. That's good. That's good. All right. Change this 16 by 16, and there we go. That's all we need for now. Create an object. Call this OBJ update or whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna give it that sprite. Show that it works. And we're gonna add. There's only two events in this. There's a create and an HTTP event. So if you're using GameMaker Pro. You can't do this. You have to have Game Maker Studio uh, Standard Edition to do this, or Professional Edition. It doesn't matter. So drag this in, and right now we're gonna begin, we're gonna get the URL, and this is um, like for the update to use. So for updater. <clears throat> okay. So now in here we want to we're gonna set a variable called async. 
ini and this is going to equal http underscore get and then in here you want to put in that link that we just copied so it's that there we go and that's it that's all you need for that event so now the next event this is what the event I've been talking about for only Game Maker Studio which is the HTTP asynchronization event so if you drag that in drag in code and this is uh, basically checking for an update throughout the whole thing so it's gonna read our uh, tutorial.ini file so now if we start we're gonna set some two variables we're gonna do a result and evid and these results or these variables are simply just to get the information off the file so now we're going to do a switch oops no we're not sorry we're going to do a vid equals ds map find value and the value it's going to find is uh, async load so it's loading some async async files and everything and then we're going to change this to the ID or add the ID so now we're going to do a switch statement for evid can't type today okay so now if we do case cause we're going to set a case value it's switching between cases obviously so async I and I, which is the variable we set in the create event, and then this is going to be result. So now we're setting that result variable. DS map find value, and we're still doing the async load because we're loading information off that, and we're getting the we're adding the result. Okay, and then next we're going to set a file variable. So file, and this is very simple. We're literally just opening uh, the file that we downloaded or opening it on the web. So file, text, open for writing. And this file is called tutorial.ini. So we're opening that file. Okay, so now it's simple from here. Um, we're going to do file, oops, file, text, write, string, and we're simply going to write uh, the file and the result. Okay, so now we're just going to uh, close that text file, and we're going to close the, oops, we're just going to close file. Okay, and now we're just gonna break this statement here. Okay, so now we're just gonna open our file that we downloaded, which of course is called tutorial.ini. Oh my gosh, I can't type today. Okay, and then we're gonna set a variable called str, and this is the, uh, we're gonna read the string off this file called uh, I mean here let me show you here okay so this if you look down here at the bottom it says section key and default so if we minimize this and if we edit this this is the section in brackets this is the key and this speaking technically zero is the default but we're not going to set a default in this case so if I go ahead and load this up again that we're looking for the version which is in brackets then we're looking for the number which is the key and then there is no default so you can just leave two empty quotations and then we're gonna simply close that file because we do not need it anymore so now comes in the update part so uh, this is simply gonna check for an update and then this is literally this stuff up here was all just like kind of getting prepared for this part this is where it all comes in so we're gonna do an if str equals one <clears throat> then uh, by the way this is 
the version number. Okay. Alright, so then we're going to go down a few and we're going to close that off. Okay, so now we're going to show message. Update is available. Okay, I am not doing one thing in this. Actually, multiple things. So, right here, at the end of this, right here, here, actually be after, you can do plus string current day or current minute, current hour, anything. Game Maker has those built in. Um, and then add a slash in between them so it says what date it's available to upload for. And then you could do another one that says show message uh, saying, um, like, press OK to download or something like that. Something, I don't know. But right here, you could also, after this message is shown, you could do URL open and then, you know, your website here. You could do that. I'm not going to do that though. It says after all that, we just want to destroy it so it doesn't keep saying we have an update, even though we already saw that update. So now we're going to add a simple else statement instance destroy. And this is if there uh, no update. It's if there's no update. All right. Let's add some more behind there. All right. Perfect. So this is all the code here, and let's go ahead and put this into our test room here. So if there is no update, it's just going to destroy itself. And you know, whenever there's an update, if the ver if uh, your number equals one, and right now it equals zero on our web server, you can see if we go into this tutorial I and I and click edit, we just click edit. It says zero, which it you know it is zero, and we need it to be one if we want there to be an update. So simply, whenever your game has an update that you want people to see, then all you have to do on your web server, edit this, change this to one, click save, and then click close, and then you always have to refresh this website or else it won't work in Game Maker. I don't know why, I don't know what it is but you always gotta make sure this hits the number one. So you just gotta, gotta keep refreshing it until it finally hits one. So maybe, we, maybe we'll get it luckily. Um, normally their web servers are kinda slow. I don't know why. All right, we gotta wait a little bit for this. So I'ma come back whenever it is updated. Okay, so here, uh, if you just refresh the page, you'll see it hits 1. Um, it takes a while to do that, so it kind of configures your update and everything. So, there we go. That's hit 1. So now if we go back into our game, and if we run this, it's going to say update is available right here. And if we click OK, it's just going to destroy it. And if you have it open your URL, it'll open your URL for the file download. Okay, so hopefully um, that cleared some things up for you guys. Hopefully you understand it a little more now. And I can leave a link to this X10 hosting in the description. So you guys can understand that a little more too. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, or even concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Alright, so thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you next time.